Okay, welcome to the employee versus independent contractor video series I've developed here. And what I will discuss in this tutorial is uh, some of the differences between employees and contractors in the context of the work that they do and their duties and obligations to you and your business. Now, you should have watched the introduction video on employee versus contractors. And if you haven't, I recommend you go back and watch that video first, just for a good cursory overview of the issues. And that should be located just above this video on the uh, website. So let's get started here. Now, in terms of an employee and a contractor, you really can't just pick and choose. You can't sit down and say, okay, I'm going to make Joe a independent contractor. I'm going to make Sarah a employee and so forth and so forth. You have to look at the situation and make a decision based on the rules. So there are certain rules that you have to follow and if you don't follow those rules you could get into some serious trouble. The consequences can be quite severe which I will go over in the following tutorial but all you need to know right now is that if you do set something up and it's not done properly or you pay an, a contractor which is really an employee then you will have to face some uh, monetary uh, you know monetary penalties with uh, various government bodies. So your best bet really is to consult a professional in these matters. Your accountant is a first source. Uh, your lawyer might be another good source, uh, but typically I would say talk to your accountant because this is something that accountants deal with really on a daily basis. Okay, so this is what I always say. If it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, and quacks like a duck, well, lo and behold, it's a duck. Now, what does this mean? Well, if someone is an employee, you know, it looks like an employee, works like an employee, then chances are they are an employee. So if you're ever in a situation where you're thinking, okay, well, can this person be an employee? Can this person be a contractor? Well, I'm pretty sure you can make the decision. It's not really difficult. Just think of this little saying here, and you should be on your way to making a good decision. Okay, employees. An employee works only for you. Typically, if they're a full-time employee, I mean, they might have another job somewhere, but really they're working for you, you know, whatever the, the hours are, 37 and a half hours a week, 40 hours a week, whatever the case may be. They usually come to your office or your place of business. You control how the work is done. And, of course, they get benefits and bonuses, and you have to pay them vacation pay and statutory holiday and so forth. So really, in this type of situation, it's easy to see that they're really an employee. Uh, if they're a contractor, uh, you know, they really wouldn't be subject to these types of conditions. With a contractor, things are much different. Typically, they are a registered business themselves, so they will have either a corporation that they're working through or have a trade name with their business, and they will have other clients, which is very, very important. If somebody's a contractor, and they're only working for you, then chances are they're not really running a business. They're really an employee. It's really that simple. Contractors are not economically dependent on you. If they're running a business, they have other clients, then, of course, if you lay them off or if you don't need their services anymore, then really they're not out of a job per se. They're just out of a client. And, of course, you don't really have control over how they do their work. Okay, so if you have... A project that needs to be done and say this is what I need to be done this is the deadline for it you put it in their hands and of course they choose how they're going to do the work now with an employee that is very different an employee you can you know supervise them monitor them you of course dictate how the work is to be done when it's to be done and you're really supervising them in terms of the work that they're doing now you know some of the some of this element can be a little bit blurred obviously if you have a contractor you are monitoring their work so if you're a, a construction contractor for example or a you know just a contractor a home renovator of course you have to monitor and supervise how the plumber is doing their work the electrician is doing their work the drywall you know the drywaller is doing their work and so forth of course you have to control that but really they are the experts they are the tradespeople, and they really have control over the actual specifics of the work so you're not exactly going to tell the plumber how to you know put in a faucet for example or how to fix the toilet you just Tell them how to do that, and of course, by definition, they should know how to do that, so they're really controlling how they do the work. You just supervise it and make sure that it's up to your standards. All right. 
So what I've really done there is go over the legal tests in everyday language. So if you actually do any research on the whole employee versus contractor issues, you'll notice certain things if you go to the CRA website or some other resources on the web. They are the control test, the ownership of tools test, chance of profit test, and the risk of loss, which is really everything we've gone over in terms of the contractor uh, element. So, you know, who controls, you know, the work to be done? Is it you or is it the contractor? That's the control test. Who owns the tools? Of doing the work. Do you own the tools? If you do, then chances are the person working for you is an employee. If the contractor or the subcontractor owns the tools, then you know they could be a contractor. Take a typical example of uh, you know a computer. If you know you have somebody working in your IT department, uh, then if you know they're coming to your office using your computer, using your servers, and that's all they really do, then they're you know then you own the tools. You're owning that laptop. But if it's an independent IT guy that comes into your office, he has his own stuff, he has his own laptop, he connects to your stuff, then of course, you know, they own the tools. So that's one of the tests. Chance of profit. Well, you know, a contractor should have a chance of profit. If they're running a business, then they're going to be responsible for their own profit and loss. And of course, risk of loss. So if, you know, they're running a business, then of course, as we all know, as business owners, there's always a risk of a loss. If there's no chance of, you know, loss, for the person that uh, is a contractor, then you know they could be considered an employee. Now, one important thing to realize is, you know, this isn't a checklist. So, you know, the uh, the Supreme Court has heard lots of cases on employee versus uh, subcontractor cases in the federal courts and the tax court. There are lots and lots of cases out there that deal with this issue, and the reason is because it's not black or white. It's really, really, really gray. And, you know, in some cases you may have met the control test, but you didn't meet the ownership of the tools test or the chance of profit test. There's a lot of information typically that is involved in these cases. And a lot of times the CRA will say one thing, you will say another thing. And the only way to resolve it is to go to the tax court. And that being said, uh, that provides us as accountants and planners, and of course you as small business owners, with some really good information because we can go to these court cases that have been decided and set things up to take all the information in those particular cases into account. And that's basically what we do. So in an upcoming tutorial, we'll go over some methodologies and some things you can do if you are hiring a contractor and you want to do things right to avoid any sort of issues with the CRA in general. So that covers this uh, the information for this tutorial and we'll see you in the uh, upcoming tutorial.